Welcome to another episode of Bustin' with your boy, Bustin' with the boys. I am your host, Will Compton. We got the boys in the back, Jack, Mitch, Taylor. The boys out in Canada right now battling fires. Apparently, out in uh, Western, I think Western. I don't want to butcher Western BC. Like, there's a lot of wildfires and fires going on. The boy, they they had to evacuate. Um, my wife was on a bachelorette out in California, out in Palm Springs. Her flight gets canceled yesterday um, because of the hurricane situation. So places are flooded out there. People aren't able to get out. There's a lot of shit going on on the West Coast. It's thankful to be in a landlocked state like Tennessee, be in the middle of the country where you can stay away from all the danger. Before we get into the episode, we are brought to you by the one, the only, the Chevy Silverado. Summer is here, and what better way to take advantage of all it has to offer than with the Chevy Silverado. Silverado Summer. Think of all the possibilities, boys. From off-road adventures to do-it-yourself projects and hardcore work, the Silverado has the capability and technology to make this summer your best one yet. With nine different Silverado models to choose from and engines that range from the powerful Turbo Max to the 6.2 liter V8 and the Duramax diesel, you can count on Chevy power and performance to get anything done. And like many of you, the boys have been hitting the road a lot lately. We're actually going to be hitting the road a lot come this fall, especially in September. I think we're busy all four or five weeks, I believe, um, for our fall tailgate tour, which we can get into. Uh, but there is an army of Silverados and Silverado owners. So shout out to all the boys out there. Game recognizes game. And I know there's a lot of, we're going out to Nebraska for the bus and bowl in week five. I know there's going to be a lot of Chevy Silverado owners out there, but head over to Chevy.com and check out the Silverado and all the Chevy trucks because it is the official truck of bussing with the boys. Guys, if you're watching on YouTube right now, do not be shy to hit the subscribe button. I know we're going to have probably a lot of Chargers fans tuned in. Uh, uh Oh, somebody's calling me. Actually, we're going to have to not take it right now. Um, there's probably going to be a lot of Chargers fans tuned in, but we are almost to 400,000 subscribers. That is fucking insane. Um, the growth that's happened. Shout out to the boys in the back, Jack, Mitch, uh, JP, Garrett, all the boys who have been a part of growing this thing. Uh, dude, 400,000 subscribers is, is, is insane. It's truly insane. Uh, Mitch, I know you and JP sat down at the beginning of the year when we're going over, hey, let's reach reach for ambitious fucking goals. Goals that we might not touch, but let's paint something. Let's just paint a picture and fucking go after something. Um, I know you guys had a very ambitious goal of 750000 by the end of the year. Also with a realistic goal, you like to call it, of 500000 by the end of the year. Right now, it seems like we're on pace, but you guys have been fucking murdering it man with a uh with a big fall coming up i think there's a chance we could reach our not the very ambitious goal of 750k but 500,000 i think is definitely in the cards and especially for what it looks like we have planned this fall i'm feeling pretty good about it i know man it's one of those things hey i have to take this phone call I i'm sorry what did you end on saying we might be able to hit that goal yeah i was saying how with everything we have planned in the fall there's definitely a chance that we could be hitting that 500k. You got to get, I know, dude, that push, you just the push from the different fan bases. We're going to be doing a lot of shit this year. I know we're doing our fall tailgate tour where we're going to six different colleges. Yeah, it's six. Yes, yeah, six stops, but they haven't been announced yet. They have not. And there's still time. Like we need, if you're watching right now and you want the boys to come by, come to your guys' college game, drop it in the chat of where he wants to go. The only thing we have kind of locked in right now is the bus and bowl. That's week five, Michigan at Nebraska. We will be in Lincoln. We will be at Memorial Stadium, but we have not announced. Uh, we're still kind of working through the stops we're going to go to. We're bringing the bus. We bought an extra bus so that way we could drive it. And it only gets up to 55. It's got a hole in the middle of the floor. Uh, but the boys, we found it somewhere down in the, uh, somewhere in the sticks of Georgia for sale on Craigslist. We bought that thing. Now we're, now we're going through a lot of hoops insurance wise and everything else to uh, get this thing on the road, but we will be going on the fall tailgate tour. We got the bus and bowl. Like I said, we're going to be hitting some stuff at the pro level as well. Obviously we got the Titans in town. Taylor, the boy obviously is a Titan through and through. So we'll be doing stuff here locally. Um, and yeah, man, I hope we fucking do bro. I hope like, dude, if we hit 750,000 subscribers on youtube that would be nuts man so hey tell your group chats tell your friends tell the boys that we need everybody it's going to take everybody uh we did some cool interviews this last week right when we got back from italy uh we hit the ground running the next day flying out to la uh we got out to la we got to sit down and go to the chargers training camp we got to go we got to go to the raiders training camp we got to do uh 
got to do some collabs with some cool podcasts of Fighter and the Kid. That one is out. I would assume the Bad Friends pod that we did with uh, Santino and Bobby Lee, that'll be out this week, I, I would assume. Um, if not, that one will be out soon. And then we also... Uh, I had to fly out on Thursday after the Rich Eisen show. We got to go on the Rich Eisen show, which was the coolest fucking thing in the world. Been watching that dude since I was just a little pup. And now seeing him, like, I don't know, just getting to be on his set and everything else. It's just one of those, like, damn, this is, this is fucking awesome. Um, and then the boy, the boys got to go out to Steve-O's house and sit down with Steve-O. So that interview will come sometime in the future. We got a lot of things we're working through right now. Some cool segments we're trying to build out for the fall we got a new show coming out this fall, which will be announced soon. We fucking bet the bus is coming back. We got new merch coming out, new new uh, The Boys theme merch for this year for college teams, NFL teams. You know how we start small until we can build demand somewhere else. So The Boys got a lot of, lot of irons in the fire right now. We probably need to bring somebody else on board. Um, but anyway, we had a hell of a week out in L.A. That was all time. I, I want to say it was on, what was it, Wednesday, where we kind of had like the 12-hour day, it felt like. I mean, we had a lot of fun in between. Well, didn't we hit uh, a... We, we, were, were pretty tough. But Wednesday was like, we obviously went out and hit the arcade and played some mini golf. We were out in the sun, right? Because we did uh, Ra or we did the fighter and the kid. Then we went out to the Raiders training camp. By the way, sitting down with Coach McDaniels. That one's going to come out next week. The way we're going to roll them out. This episode, Austin Eckler, Mike Williams, and Keenan Allen, we sat down with those three. They were a combined... 40 like around 40 minutes we only got to talk to austin for like 10 minutes it sucked because i really wanted to get into the running back market stuff mike williams and keenan allen they joined us they'll be rolling out today and then on thursday you can expect to see us again on thursday we'll be dropping the derwin james uh interview on thursday and the next tuesday you will see uh, coach mcdaniels from the raiders he was honestly a lot of fun to sit down with i didn't know what to expect i was low-key a little nervous my boy amir abdullah just said they got done not having the greatest practice in the world so He's kind of got that light about him that he's a little bit of a stiff. He was not at all sitting with us. I think this interview that comes out with uh, Coach McDaniels, I think a lot of people are going to like it and enjoy it. Uh, but that's kind of what you guys can look forward to. Um, but yeah, we got to hit the Raiders training camp. And then that day, we had to stay up north in northern LA. So we had mini golf. We're playing the arcade. We're sweating our fucking asses off. And then we go and do Bad Friends Pod at like 7 p.m. at night, 7.30 at night. Finally get back to the hotel like 10. We have, you know, we have to drive like 40 minutes back down to where our hotel was. Fortunately, missing all the, it was after all the traffic, but we had a bit of a day on Wednesday. Hit it Thursday morning with the Rich Eisen show and then was out. But it was a hell of a week, man. Now we got back into the swing of things. I get back. My wife's gone for her bachelorette party for the weekend. So I'm rolling solo dad duty all weekend. I logged 10 and a half hours on my garment of sleep one night, boys. I fell asleep, crashed on the couch at like 9.30 and didn't wake up until like 5 the next morning. Went over to my, went over to my bed, slept till about 8.30, but it felt like a, I, I can't remember the last time I've slept 10 and a half hours. Slept really past. I, I usually struggle to sleep like past 8 o'clock, but I don't know the last time I've logged like an actual 10 and a half hours. Um, but hella fun weekend. Get a little weekend with the daughter, with Ruli. And now we're we're back kicking this week, boys. Um, we got some stuff. We got some segments coming up. Shout out, no for shout out, pet peeve, twisted question, tear talk, shittiest question. Um, we'll get into those things after we knock out this ad read. We interrupt this episode to bring you Duke Cannon. Duke Cannon creates thick, high viscosity body wash. Thick is formulated with a noticeably high viscosity and built to work effectively on your body and not spew down the shower drain. We partnered with Duke Cannon to create a scent that best embodied our trophy game, the rivalry game between Nebraska and Michigan. It's called the Bussin' Bowl. We all came together. Duke Cannon wanted to partner with the boys and create a scent that best embodied this game. We wanted to bring a scent to life that celebrates this game, the greatest rivalry, Nebraska versus Michigan, and we wanted to create this big-ass brick of soap. A big-ass brick of soap is three times bigger than any of your common bullshit soaps out there. It's a, a triple-milled for high superior quality, and it's made with natural oils. With this scent called the Trophy Game, created by Bustin' with the Boys in Duquesne, we uh, we wanted to give you guys hints of smoked leather and amber that smells like a collegiate football game bragging rights. That, that uh, them shoulder pads you smell when you walk into a locker room, but with a little bit more of an appealing taste. When you walk out and you hit that tailgate, you smell like, hey, what do you smell like? I smell like the fucking trophy game that was created by 
busting with the boys in Duke Cannon. Find this new Duke Cannon scent at DukeCannon.com slash trophy game. Again, busting with the boys, Duke Cannon created a soap that helps solve the problem of finding the scent that best represented the trophy game, which is the busting ball fought over by Michigan and Nebraska. That scent is now available everywhere, everywhere. It's called Trophy Game. Go to DukeCannon.com slash Trophy Game. And speaking of being out in uh, the, at the Raiders training camp out in L.A., Josh Jacobs just, sh- just signed. I think he's going back. The rumor is, or the articles that are coming out right now, is that Josh is going uh, back to training camp. I'm like, I'm fired up because we need the boys firing on all cylinders. We need the silver and black rolling this football season. I think Josh Jacobs is one of the best, if not the best, running back in the league right now, especially with the numbers he put up last year. I know he was wanting to hold out for a long-term deal or a longer deal. The whole running back market in general, that's why I can't wait for you guys to listen to Austin Eckler coming up. Uh, But the whole running back market in general has been kind of like, you know, vocalizing their their concerns about the, the, the devaluing of the running back over time. You had guys going into this offseason back when they had the FaceTime call, when the uh, running backs were kind of stand up and vocalizing their, their concerns and, and, uh, and frustration. You had Dalvin Cook, not Austin Eckler, he's up after next year, but you had Dalvin Cook, Saquon Barkley, Josh Jacobs, anybody else that was, uh, that was looking for a deal? Ezekiel Elliott. You had four. Go ahead, Mitch. Was Tony Pollard, one of them. Uh, maybe. I know he was like kind of up, and now that Zeke isn't there anymore, he's right. You kind of get to be the feature back, the main back. Uh, you had those four backs: Zeke, Dalvin Cook, Saquon, and Josh, kind of holding out and doing their thing, being hopeful for long-term deals. But obviously, the back and forth here: all of those running backs got one-year deals. Some soft one-year deals. I want to say Dalvin and Zeke were like in that four to six range for a year. Um, Saquon, I want to say he signed a one year for like 10 and 10 and some change. Yeah. But did he sign the tag or did they just modify the one year deal? Maybe you sign the tag and then you modify. I have no fucking clue. And it seems like Josh Jacobs is about to be in the same boat. All running backs were hopeful they could get long-term deals done. It seems like you chalk this one up as the owners, you know, the leverage is hard, man. Saquon was in a, a podcast recently talking about, you could just say, fuck it like fuck the team and fuck ownership and everything else and hold out because your leverage is you playing, right? But at the same time, you're in the most selfless team game there is. And there's a part of you that doesn't want to do anything. There's a big part of you that doesn't want to do that because you don't want to send that message to the team because even though it's you negotiating against the ownership, right? It's like it's you negotiating for your deal. You still have the internal the internal conversations that go on amongst the players, amongst the coaches that just... Some guys can feel slighted. Some guys can't. It's like, man, at what point is enough money and enough? Like, hey, we're, we're looking to the future of the running back here, trying to save the running back, like, species as a whole. But how far do you go to try and do that without sending the wrong message? And not even that, but playing in the window that you can play in. Like, the NFL stands for not for long, but the shelf life as an NFL player is very small. And it's like, how far are you willing to go to try and acquire a contract that you feel like is necessary for the running back market to kind of value itself back up in the ranks. Data doesn't like play into their hands. It's like when you get past that second contract or when you get past that first contract, um, the tread on the tire, it thins out, man. It's like how much Derrick Henry is basically the only running back to prove that you get better in the second contract. I'm not saying that running backs aren't fucking great in their second contract, but it's one of those things like Derrick's one specimen that's kind of proving the okay, he still can put up 2,000-yard seasons and everything else. I think this year will be a big year that will play into that data. It's like the guys like Austin Eckler, Derrick Henry, Saquon, Josh Jacobs, Ezekiel Elliott, these type of backs that were absolute studs in their earlier years when they're getting these long-term deals, you need them to still perform like fucking studs, like horses in their later 20s to help that data show that, hey, the running back can carry that type of load. Because we sit with Austin, and I wish, again, I wish we had more time with Austin. And very smart cat. You see that he's very business savvy. Is savvy. He understands the complexities that come with the, the running back market and the value and the businesses and the ownership, being an owner versus being an employee. And Austin says a lot of good stuff, but Austin's story is a great example of 
not necessarily running back by committee, but there's hum some hungry motherfuckers that are out there that's just waiting on the opportunity to get their shot. Austin is one of those examples because you go back to where Melvin Gordon was holding out for a deal at the time because he wanted a bigger deal for the running back. I wanted to say maybe um, who's, a, who's a boy from, uh, from the Arizona Cardinals at the time? David Johnson might have gotten a big deal. I can't remember. Somebody got something. I want to say Melvin Gordon wanted something like that. Maybe it was Ezekiel Elliott. And Melvin was holding out for something more, right? He was kind of like trying to leverage his ability. He's coming off of a prime year and uh, was trying to leverage himself. In those times where he was holding out, a guy like Austin Eckler, an undrafted fucking free agent that's cutting his teeth on special teams and realized he can tote the rock around. The team realized he can tote the rock around in training camp because when your starter's gone and your best ability is availability. When somebody's gone, you're next up, that next man up mentality. There's going to be a hungry motherfucker or a diamond in the rough at some point along the way. A story like Austin Eckler's proves that, that he comes in, he overtakes that job. He becomes the mainstay at running back. He becomes like the do-it-all running back, run, pass catch, put his face in the fan and pass block, pass pro and all that. And then you find yourself that the game's going to go on and go with or without you. Austin's now going to position himself of being an old head and being somebody who's got to kind of carry that torch for those perennial backs that can be older and still tote the rock. But it's, it's just interesting because ultimately, like, guys got to look out for themselves. You got to take those... Uh, you got to take those contracts when you feel like you can. I'm saying all that because Josh Jacobs, he was holding out, I would assume, for a three, five-year deal. Maybe he possibly wanted. Maybe a longer-term deal. And uh, maybe that there was something on the table. I know we were there at their training camp. It sounded like there was something on the table at some point in time. And he doesn't see that contract. He doesn't get that because they couldn't agree to terms before that July 17th franchise tag date, June 17th, somewhere in the summer. Then when you miss that opportunity to get a longer term deal, it is now sign the franchise tag or get on a one year deal at most. So Josh is now in a position where he plays on this tag. Hopefully he knocks it out of the fucking park to where he can look at getting a multi year deal. But if not, you play yourself out of that contract that you could have gotten where you miss money. That's why it's, it's always such a tough spot to be in as a player because you've got to bet on yourself. Owners, they're not going anywhere. They know the ball is going to continue to bounce. They know the, the rosters are going to look different year in and year out. They're not going anywhere. Their shelf life is as long as they want it to be. Um, so it, it's just tough negotiating against time for, your, for the boys, for yourself, balancing it all. Uh, but I'm fired up. Josh is back in camp, obviously, because I'm rooting for the silver and black this year. I'm not sitting in the seat of being a fan watching the boys unless a call shakes up in December or January, like I was talking about with the uh, head coach and GM while we were out there in Vegas. But um, so you guys will love the conversation we had with Austin Keenan and Mike. That'll be coming up. Let's get into the uh, let's get into a shout out. No free shout out. Let's get into a shout out. No free shout out. Brought to us by Paramount Plus. As always, you can feel the air, the August breeze. Uh, not even breeze, but the humidity. You hear the pads popping. Football season is upon us. And uh, your Paramount Plus account also gives you an all-access pass to 24-7 NFL content all week long with CBS Sports HQ, Fantasy Football Today, NFL Slime Time, and more. Uh, the stream... Paramount Plus on any device. You can stream it on any device at home or on the go and follow us on the road to Las Vegas as Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, Aaron Rodgers, Justin Herbert, Jalen Hurts, and all of the NFL's best try to take down the boy Patrick Mahomes, the king, the godlike figure out in Kansas City, the defending champion, Kansas City Chiefs. Watch your local game every Sunday starting at $2.50 a month for 12 months. Visit ParamountPlus.com slash NFL to start your free trial today. The offer ends on September 20th. Annual plan only terms and conditions apply. Stream the NFL on CBS live on Paramount Plus. Mitch, let's kick it off. What is your shout out? No free shout out brought to us by Par Paramount Plus. My, uh, my shout out, no free shout out this week goes to, this is technically week zero of college football season. We do not, we, ha we have college football every Saturday from now until January, which is absolutely unreal. So my shout out goes to those college football hype videos that you watch to get ready for the season. I know I personally used to watch them before my games. Hell yeah. You would just be sitting on the bus, like juiced up, getting goosebumps and stuff. And there you- We ready. It just fires you up so much to get out there and just like, 
play football. Like, I'll still watch them nowadays just to get ready to sit on my couch and watch it. But there might be a college football hype video coming out of Bussin for our college football tour kind of Ooh. foreshadow. That. I'm juiced up about that. I yeah, do like a good motivational video. You haven't seen it yet, but it's 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 in the lab cooking. Really? Yeah. I do love that. And you say watch, get hyped up just to sit on your couch. No, man. There's like a there's a nostalgia that comes watching a fucking motivational video like that. And you watch back in the day when you know in in August when the pads are popping and fall camp was happening. And maybe like me back in middle school, Headstrong was getting hype. Like you get a song that just pulls you in, that brings you back to a moment when you were fucking lacing up, whether putting on the pads, getting on the court, doesn't fucking matter. And it just fires you the fuck up that you, yeah, get to sit on the couch and root for your favorite team, but it brings you back to a moment to where it, it gives you that nostalgia of missing it. And knowing that the season is here, like the weather's here and everything else, and you're fired up to be hanging with the boys or whoever you're around just to get motivated and verbally assault some people at the television. Mm -hmm. And drop in the group chats and throw your sack there on the table and let them know that you won in fantasy football. Like the air is coming, bro. It's, I love that shout out. It's amongst us. Right it now. is amongst <laughs> us. Jack, what do you got? Um, kind of going off what Mitch was saying, football's back, but my shout out of your shout out goes to parlays. The gambling gods always are against us, but this weekend also kind of a partial shout out, shout out of your shout out to Sean O'Malley, the Bantamweight champion of the world. I took a nice little parlay. It was um, Sean O'Malley, any any kind of win, so knockout, TKO, or submission before two and a half rounds, and it was like plus 485. Put like 50 bucks on it and won like $400. So it was... Um, it was a nice little treat on Saturday. And I was, I'm a big Sean O'Malley fan. So to see him win the belt and also get a little coin on the side, it was nice. So like I said, football's right around the corner. Cannot wait to be throwing out bets. Also nasty parlays. Yeah. We might be, um, we might be having some parlays coming out here in the next few months along with some content. So stay tuned with that. But yeah, shout out to winning a parlay. It's, Kind of like cheat the system. Got some of the boys getting in front of the camera a little bit more with something we got cooking this fall. We'll see. We'll see what goes on. But yeah, shout out to a, to a nice wager. Dude, I'm so excited to stay in that show up and, and obviously build the hype for that. Like, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a great fucking time. Uh, and also, Big Cat, he tweeted it yesterday over the weekend. The Pro Football Football Show, your boy, is coming on as a co-host. So I'm fired up as as one of the mainstays on the show with, with uh, Big Cat. I want to say Casey is uh is one as well i want to say dave is going to be involved taylor's going to be involved kyle long we got a like a revolving fourth chair we got a revolving fourth chair with myself big cat and casey but that's going to be a fucking good time and i know last year the last two years they've had Deion sanders on so you go from one hall of famer to the next very excited very excited to be on uh the uh pro football football show we're going to be rolling around a lot this fall and it's going to be exciting i think we have the tailgate tour stuff spaced out enough start off hot in september then we get to sit back maybe I, it's either one or two in october but we really get to pour into a spooktober and then we're looking at you know one or a couple in november and again we're starting to iron those things out but we don't last year we learned like how quickly like that flame can burn at both ends when you're trying to get absolutely everywhere but we're going to have a lot of fun stuff happening, man, getting out and frequenting Chicago and everything else. My shout-out, no free shout-out, brought to us by Paramount Plus, is going to go to uh, the parents will get on board with this one. But when you, uh, when you sleep in and your infant doesn't wake up until, like, you wake up, you hear him stirring. I heard Rue stirring at, like, 8.30. Rue wakes up at – she usually – we put her down at 7. She sleeps till 7. But she's usually up at, like, 6.30 and then chills in the crib – until about seven or until we go up and get her. And since mom's out of town, it was just your boy. And when I knocked out on the couch that night, I was trying to stay up to watch the Sean O'Malley fight, to watch the Sean O'Malley fight. And that is a great shout out, Jack, because I'm fired up that he's a champion. Um, but I was trying to stay up and watch that fight. Ended up dozing off and falling asleep, but get it back in bed. Like go, go to my bed at like five in the morning thinking like I'll probably just sleep. I felt kind of awake, but I was out sleep a couple more hours and I'm sure I'll wake up here at 6.30 or seven. And when I start to hear Rue stir like 8.30 in the morning and she's being cool, calm, and collected, like that's a, that's a good feeling. When you get all of your sleep in as a parent, 
and your little one that isn't bothering you. They're not interrupting your sleep. Like they're not ready to go. And you're like, oh, okay, let's get going. Like she was just chilling and in a good mood in her crib at like 8 30 in the morning. So dad was fired up. That's my shout out. No free shout out is when you get, when you get to sleep in as a parent and your little one's not making a fuss in the morning and you get to kind of still like enjoy your morning. Um, but that's my, that's my shout out. No free shout out boys. Dude, as someone who does not have kids at, at some point probably will. It scares me a lot having to give up those precious moments of sleep on like a weekend. That's why I know I'm not ready to be a dad. It's because I'm not ready to wake up at 6 a.m. and deal with a kid. And that's okay, bro. That's okay. It's like the shit out it's of like me. people like, man, you, you like, yeah, you gotta. There's we're all selfish. We're all selfish human beings, man. All of us. We're all in our own world. We're all in our own ego. We all want the shit to work out our way. And when you do have a kid, like it's it's over your selfishness <laughs> your selfishness is now you have to pick your shots and windows you have to plan and organize that's one area where we've my wife and i we've we've gotten a lot better at is is like utilizing the calendar which has been a, a learning curve for your boy but uh utilizing the calendar planning ahead communicating at all times it's like this morning i was like oh fuck i saw on the calendar that we were supposed to shoot the intro at 10 and i'm sitting here like hey i'll be in before a little bit before 11 when it's like Charles' flight got canceled and comes to Monday, and now it's going to get canceled until Tuesday. It's like, man, I got to remember to hit up the boys and let them know whenever flights get canceled, I'm not going to have that. I can't get up at 6 to work out. I have to wait. I have to wait until our babysitter gets there, our nanny gets there at 7.30, so then I can go work out and then get all that stuff in. But yeah, bro, trying to plan out your selfishness throughout the week. And the weekend, it doesn't stop. Like, it, it's, just, it's just never... The key is routine, Jack, and you'll know this when you're uh, when you become a parent. I'm already becoming one of those older motherfuckers. Like, here's the key. Here's how you do it. I'm not. I'm not ready to be selfless for someone else. I can be selfless, but not enough to bring someone into the world. So. Yeah, you lose it. You lose it, man. You you realize like you have to prioritize other shit. If not, there'll be there'll be some some lows somewhere. You know what I mean? Like you might want your couple hours of freedom, but it's got to be like structured out in a way where I don't know. That's why I sneak off and stay at the bus till about fucking as long as I can. <laughs> then you go home. Then you do the then you do the dad thing until you put them down. And then when you put them down, it's like you got a decision to make. Do I want to separate and go watch TV on my own and kind of like be to myself, or do you build the relationship with the wife? Because then that's the that's those are the times where you get with the wife. Um, then you wake up and you do it all over again. But yeah, bro, you you kind of lose it. That's why it's a uh, when you get to sleep in and get to kind of like, oh man, I'm glad like uh, Rue's being cool and just kind of hanging in her kid crib right now. Like she's having a good time with her tiger and lion and stuffed animals in there. I feel like once they get older, though, you kind of get that you get that selfishness a little bit back when they. Get you older. probably do again, like yeah, that, you're, like you're yeah. Listen, listening to my boys who have like older kids, man. Like you're going to soccer games. Like your weekends are around them it's your kids i mean i remember yeah. growing up playing like travel basketball and like all the sports and i have three other siblings so like my parents lives were our lives they weren't their lives it was them taking us to practice and going to extra like curricular school stuff you know making lunches it's just yeah it doesn't stop it seems making like. man you're so right bro like yeah like that's you look back and you realize how much like your parents actually do for you or if money gets tight, how you're now with a different family going to that traveling, Definitely. going to that traveling tournament, staying with your buddy, um, thinking it's awesome. But now when you get older, you realize like all the sacrifices like your parents make just so you can have a childhood like that to go to all the games and go to all the weekends and everything else. It's like in the future, you know, knock on wood, we keep this thing going and floating and ascending. Like you're going to have to plan, oh, the soccer tournaments this weekend. You got this this weekend, maybe dance this weekend. Who knows what they're going to be into? Maybe debate. We got a little debate matchup this weekend. Four years old or on the debate team or some shit, but you never know how it's going to change, man. It's just like, you're just in it. A lot of highs, a lot of like, oh, fuck, I got to kind of like let this go. I got I to gotta like reprogram my brain to think a little bit differently because if you think too much like selfishly, you're just going to get pissed off at everything else. Just be resenting this year yeah, old. Yeah, exactly. Just mad like, oh, man. Ruined my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh fuck, man! Um, twisted question of the week. Oh, we want to get into the twisted question. We got a twisted question. Before we get into the twisted question, presented by old Mitch Carsley back there, 
Twisted Question is brought to you by Twisted Tea, the smoothest hard iced tea out there. Perfect for pool parties. And I'm going to say this, perfect for tailgates. Tailgating season is coming, boys. Load yourself up with Twisted Tea. Twisted Tea lights for people like, oh, there's a lot of sugar, a lot of carbs and everything else. Twisted Tea light is a nice little substitute to enjoy refreshing iced tea with some twists in there with a little bit of kick, 5% ABV, uh, natural and casual. It's your favorite parts about Twisted Tea, and that is the beverage itself, a nice ice cold Twisted Tea, and also the camaraderie that you have at these tailgates. But grab a refreshing Twisted Tea today. You can pretty much find it everywhere. Go support the boys. Go hard. Go Twisted. You know what I'm saying? Bud Light goes one way. Twisted Tea goes the other. They're fucking representing the boys. Um, so go ahead, grab yourself a twisted tea anywhere today. But this twisted question, Jack, get or not Jack, Mitch, give it to us. All right, so we got we have two that we can do here, and we can pick which one we want. Okay. Uh, first one: Would you rather the ability to change the past or see into the future? I have only done one like that before. Okay. It would to me it'd be yeah. to me it'd be change the past. Would you rather? It be summer forever or winter forever. Oh, I mean. And I said, I said for something. This was more for like me. If you wanted it to be fall forever or spring forever, we could do whatever one. I think maybe fall and winter and spring and summer together. I don't know. That's tough. That's so tough. I think you have to do. Summer, right? No more football ever. Why not? There's football. There's football. What do you? You're saying like you get the. I mean, it's summer. Oh, you're saying you get the months with it, like you only get. Are you just saying? Yeah, I think that's the case. Like it's. So you only get what? Like the weather. It's not like it's hot all year. It's cold all year. It's like you get the end of November until what? The beginning of March. Yeah, that seems fair. Or. You get from like. What is it? May to August, June, July, August, one of the end of May, end of May to beginning of August. For what? Summer? Summer? Uh, yeah. Summer really goes until like September. My birthday's first day of summer. When's your birthday? June 21st. That's the first day of summer? Yep. That's no, that's bullshit. First day of summer is. Look that up for me. First day of summer. No, I, I, I believe that. The fucking internet might say that the first day of summer is June 21st, but the first day of summer is wait. no later than June 1st. I could argue some of the back half of some of the back part of May. Like whenever school is out, summer's that. summer is here. I would agree. That those first few weeks of June. Let's just say summer. summer is officially now June 1st. So you're just saying like when it gets warm? Or no, I'm just saying like that's just what it is. Sure. Oh, but I, I, yeah, I guess you got. I mean, if it's if it's only the months, I'm gonna go winter then, because you get football. I personally, I'm more of a. I would rather play in the in the cold than play in the heat. I would rather be cold than be hot. Thanks. Because I get extremely like, I just get too antsy, man. Like you can layer up in the cold. I think it's easy. It's easier to warm up than it is to cold cool down. Yeah. Like you can always put extra blankets on, extra sweatshirt, sweatpants, but. You cannot, like, once you, like, are in shorts and a t-shirt, like, you can just take your clothes off, but you can still be hot with your clothes off. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say uh, winter. I'm going to say winter. Holiday season, playoff football, Super Bowl still in, mm -hmm. still in the winter. You know what I'm saying? What else more do you need? What else do you need? I mean, that's the, that's, like, the most, uh, I feel like when you have the most perspective, when you have the most gratitude is when you're in holiday season, enjoying the people you love. Like, yeah, it's a little cold outside. Yeah, the, the winter can be a little shitty, but I think that that's what creates the mentality. I'm with you. I agree. Same. So we're all going winter? Yeah. Do we need to find another one where we disagree? Or? No, I think that one's solid. I think people, I think people think we're, we're crazy for doing winter. It actually reminds me of this poem I was reading earlier. Let's see here. This poem is brought to us by, uh, was shared by Brian Peters, a great follow on Twitter, Brian underscore Peters 10. But it's a poem called Good Timber by Douglas Malick. Listen to this one, boys. The tree that never had to fight.
for sun and sky and air and light, but stood out in the open plain and always got its share of rain, never became a forest king, but lived and died a scrubby thing. The man who never had to toil to gain and farm his patch of soil, who never had to win his share of sun and sky and light and air, never became a manly man, but lived and died as he began. Good timber does not grow with ease. The stronger wind, the stronger trees. The further sky, the greater length. The more the storm, the more the strength. By sun and cold, by rain and snow, in trees and men, good timbers grow. Where thickest lies the forest growth, we find the patriarchs of both. And they hold counsel with the stars, whose broken branch branches show the scars. Of many winds and much of strife, this is the common law of life. Does that not juice you up? I mean, you were speaking right there. That's Douglas Malick, dude, shared by Brian Peters, now shared by Will Compton on Busting with the Boys. That's a good poem. That's a good poem to have. See. That shows you're built in a winner. You're built in the trials and tribulations of life. You feel me, Jack? Hell yeah. If that right there doesn't get, it, get you excited for gambling this fall. Very. That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> if that right there doesn't get you ready to fail miserably on a parlay and a lot of bets, only just read that poem and come back the next week ready to swing. Time to, um, time to set sail, boys. Time to set sail. Before we do, as we set sail, set sail with some fucking whiskey that makes you feel like a man, that makes you feel like the timber, those timber trees standing strong, standing tall. We got a few bottles right here. One, they're known for their rye whiskey. Whistle Pig is one of the most credible, probably the most credible rye whiskey brand in all of the fucking land. Out in the uh, mountains of Vermont, they craft an incredible rye whiskey. They're known for their six year, which we have right here. That's their most popular, best price point, flies off the shelves. Um, but some of their hitters, I'm holding their 10 year, phenomenal, phenomenal rye, by the way but their 12 year might be my personal favorite. Now, if you have the, you have the wallet to get yourself the, uh, the boss hogs of the world, go ahead and dive yourself in there. Uh, but we also have uh, whistle pig wanted to do a bourbon whiskey. They chose busting with the boys as one of their only, maybe their only brand to, to uh, do a bourbon with. They made a bourbon on their own. And then they had busting with the boys make a bourbon on our own. Um, you're going to taste some sweet, some, some heat up front. You're going to smell a little bit of caramel. You're going to taste a little, a little bit of that black pepper heat right at the very tip top of your throat when you're about to swallow to where you're a little scared, you're a little nervous walking into the cave. However, as it goes down your throat, picture yourself in the backyard on a fall, autumn day. The football game's about to kick off at noon and you're swinging in a hammock in the backyard. That's how it goes down your throat. Smooth, soft, easy. And it sits warmly on the very tip top of your gut. You can find this Whistle Pig Whiskey, especially our bourbon, as you see with the sticker up top here, you can find our bourbon sold at any Whistle Pig retailer. Wherever you get your Whistle Pig, call up your local retailer, ask if they have the Bustle with the Boys bourbon, say you want 10 of them, and then go pick it up. Uh, but go ahead and grab yourself a bottle of Whistle Pig Whiskey and kick your work, kiss your workday goodbye this summer, this fall, and kick it off with a rye day. Kick it off with a rye day and a little bit of bourbon with the boys. Um, that was a smooth, that was a smooth little ad read for, for, uh, for the boys, for Whistle Pig, man. They should definitely clip that and use it as like their, their opening video on their website. Um, should we do a tear talk? I thought, I thought of a fun little tear talk. Are we, are we able to do a tear talk? Yeah. Uh, best things about August. We're in the months of August. There's a lot of FOMO. You see all the football clips going on and everything else. And there's a little bit of FOMO about like getting involved more with August. I feel like the, the first day of school, I mean, you're picking your first outfit to go back. Like you can feel the energy of football season and school coming. And that spirit is in the air. And what better way to kick it off than to talk about some of our favorite things about the month of August. Is there a God tier? Ah, fuck the God tier, dude. I don't think so. Fuck the gods. <clears throat> Let's make it about us. 
What would God's ear be? Football comes back? I mean, that is God's ear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, God tier football comes back. Mitch, you go ahead with your tier talk. Can I get a couple seconds or no? Sure, you get a couple seconds. Let me, um, I'll go ahead and get in on mine. Favorite things about August. And football being back is on my list. <laughs> That's all that really matters. Favorite things about August. My, my tier three is going to be specific. Nebraska football coming back. You know the boys are in training camp right now. They just unveiled their new locker room. Their new facilities are getting put together. The boys have some rule They have some momentum going into the season. And you feel it every year with Nebraska football. You know the, the, the farm owners. They're ready to come to the facilities and cook their fucking Wagyu steaks and their thick ribeyes for the boys. Like, hey, after practice, we'll cook. We'll be outside. And you're grabbing that tomahawk and eating it off the bone with it, the bone in your hand. And you just know that Nebraska football is coming back. That's my tier three is that little tickle about Nebraska football. My tier two is going to be prepping for that fantasy football team. The group chats are starting up again for fantasy football. The shit talking's in the air. The whoever won last year, their shit still doesn't stink. They can talk down to everybody else. The ones who suck, the one who's got to, I think the loser of our, the loser of our fantasy league this year is going to have to sit at a restaurant with a blow-up doll, with a sex doll. And I'm trying to get in the, the stipulation that it has to be on Instagram live. Um, but my tier two is going to be prepping for that fantasy football draft. There's nothing like, like getting ready, seeing what's happening in the preseason, seeing what guys you're going to pick up. When I was in the trenches with the boys, I'd go up to, you know, the Derrick Henry's of the world, be, hey, where are we at? Like, how are you feeling about, you know, you're going to get the rock 20 to 30 times a game again this season, you think? Because I'm thinking about taking you one overall. Hey, Christian McCaffrey, well, how you, how's the body feeling? Up and down, up and down years. Put together a hell of a year last year, and your boy took him first overall, Christian McCaffrey, and it fucking paid off. Uh, my tier one, my tier one. Hearing the pads popping. Hearing the pads popping. Yeah, football's back. Football's back is God tier, but specifically the sounds of football. When you hear the pads pop and the pads come on, the shoulder pads come on for the first time and you start hearing it, you start hearing the boys kissing throughout the country, laying the wood, knocking somebody's dick in the dirt. Some no name comes out of nowhere. Kenny Vaccaro, he was on the, he was on the street, as you would like to say, when he got uh, either cut or whatever from the New Orleans Saints, was waiting for an opportunity, had to sign a minimum deal with the Tennessee Titans, comes to the Titans, uh, comes to the Titans, middle of camp. I want to say he was running with the second team, third team, don't fucking remember. But all I do know this, the motherfucker laid the wood on somebody to set the tone his first day out in pads. That led to him obviously taking over the reins, being the starting safety for a couple of years, then re up into a big deal, but took advantage of an opportunity coming back in. But it all started when he came to camp on a minimum deal and laid the fucking pipe to somebody. No homo. Actually, you know what? No pause. But that's my tier one. When you start hearing the pads pop, it gets you a little giddy inside. It gets the, the blood flowing below the belt. That's my tier one. And that is my tier talk. Are we doing a one word? Yeah, go ahead. Football. Hard. One word, boner. Legendary. All right, go ahead, Mitch or Jack. I got it. Um, I'm, I'll not revolve everything around football like you did. Uh, not a football but, guy. I mean, it is, but it's God tier. I mean, it's football is everything that you just said. Fantasy football, pads popping, Nebraska football. It's all, <laughs> it's all the same thing. I'm, I'm right there with you. I'm getting juiced up too but my tier three and the reason it's tier three is because it kind of sucks but like a part of it makes you sort of excited a little bit but school's back like being able yeah it sucks going to school it sucks doing your homework and sitting in class that you really don't give a shit about but you're kind of like back with your boys sort of 
back at the cafeteria table, back just like messing around in the parking lot after school. Just you're just back with your boys. Just but, chasing tail. Yes, and that's, so that's but being too nervous to actually chase it for real. Like, yeah, telling watch, your boys you're watch fucking. This, watch this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, no, no, don't do that. Don't do that. You be cool. Be cool. Yeah, my my tier two. This is uh, dependent on where you grew up. Um, like some parts of the country might be a little bit different. Uh, but like the weather starts to sort of change. Like you'll get that little like that little tease in August where it's like, ah, oh, it's like seventy five in the mid afternoon. Like yeah, one of them good days. It's like up in PA, you'll get that every every now and then. Like maybe you start seeing like that one tree that's a little older, a little weaker. It starts to change its colors a little earlier. Like you start to get that that fall vibe. It's hey, it's it's coming. It's here. Uh, and my tier one, I guess this sort of has to do with football. But it's those summer workouts with your team, with your with the squad you're going into football season with. You should be like, hey, it's here. We're about to we're about to do this thing. It's our year. Beginning of the season during the summer workouts, you've been seeing how much work you've been putting in. Be like, bro, we're going undefeated this year. We're in them PRs. Our, you're in them PRs. Putting up weight. Just lightweight. Just fucking yeah. doing your thing. Um just with that, with it being in the air and just being so close, you can almost taste it. It's it makes those workouts a little bit easier. Mm. That's my tier one. That's solid. Very solid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, you know, Mitch is one of them kids too who took the picture serious. Oh, for sure. Like, Miles, good. Like, oh, took yeah. the photo serious. My mom always. Uh, my tear talk number three is coming in is just back to school and it relates for adults and kids in school. Cause I remember you go all summer long, like in high school or middle school or whatever. And you're actually pretty excited for that first week back. See a lot of the old friends kind of show off some new shoes or a new shirt, whatever it may be. And then also if you're on the opposite side of it as an adult parent, kid or a parent or someone without kids, one, your kids are back in school, more time for you, or just like normal places where kids are being, you know, out of control, whether it's like a public pool or the gym, they are now subjected to school. So they're no longer in the free world. Yeah. You kind of get them out of the way. So it's kind of like a nice deal for both of them back to school. Uh, number two is probably going to be Friday Night Lights. It's like the first month where high school football comes back. And where I grew up, I was really close to Brentwood Academy. I didn't go there, but I lived a street over. So every Friday night when they had a home game, you'd see the lights getting fired up. You hear the announcers on it. And then like you, you could just like feel the energy of the crowd from a few streets away. And that's kind of like the first moment where I feel like fall is starting to like break. So whether it's football or Friday night lights, it's kind of all encompassing. Uh, and I think number one for me, I don't want to like piggyback with yours, but it's my favorite time of year. It's fantasy. Like my boys and me like take our fantasy league extremely serious. Um, our commissioner does like seven or eight different, um, uh, polls so that we can really figure out what we want for our league this year. And we just finished up our last one. Um, and I think our draft is like the first week of, um, or maybe like Labor Day weekend. It's like mm -hmm. a week before football actually starts. So yeah, it's like the first time when you're really starting to like know the football is making a return. You've got a chance to take another run at a championship. You got to start dialing it in. You start hitting the forums, really doing your research. So it's just like a really good time of year where things start pushing away from hot weather, away from summer into a more structured Friday Night Lights, football, time of year. So that is, that's me. Solid. Nice. <laughs> Did should we get a, uh, speaking on fantasy football, should we do a bust with the boys league? I was just going to mention that after this. So I think so. And I'm willing to like set it up for us and we can just have like pretty standard rules. And if we want to get three other people, how many do we have? Seven? It would be here. Yeah. Yeah, we get clumped. So we could add in like two more people and make it a 10 man league. Just do like standard PPR, snake draft. I mean, unless anyone else wants to do other 
styles of draft. That's my yeah. preferred method. That's yeah, I like that. I like that as well. Um, no yeah. like defensive. Players. However, we bo- we boosted the defensive stats a little bit. Okay. To give defense more of a role. I like that. In uh in fantasy. But yeah, I know we tried to do that last year, and I think it just kind of got away from us, and the season started, and we're like, okay. Maybe next year. Yeah, 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 you're right. You're right about I'm that. I'm down to, uh, to get one organized and get us all in, like, a draft here in the next few weeks. We should do that. It'd Let's be a great that. thing to, like, just have, like, a 10-minute segment, what we're doing, and we can do, like, a funny punishment. Yeah. a loser that people are going to obviously want to watch. I was, so I was thinking, like, it, one, it could be, like, a little segment we do on the show and, like, kind of something for the people to keep up with, but also, like, we have that punishment at the end of the year, like, yeah, what's the punishment gonna be? I can't. I said something like, "You gotta go bald," but the loser should have to transition to the other sex. I mean, that's that's uh... a. <laughs> I, I mentioned this in my fantasy group He's, I mean, this that's year. Something. Is that you had to drive to Mount Rushmore and take a selfie and drive back, which is the thirty-six that's... hour commute there and back. Would How you... would you know? That somebody wouldn't just buy a flight. Oh, we'd like have to get like an update like every hour on the road, like you in the car. So like that's a, yeah, we wouldn't we wouldn't let someone get away. That with could that. be fun. That's better than probably you know. You could drive to Vegas and shoot the that would be rough. I think, I think you know. Yeah, last thing we need is to get <laughs> get caught at having things around what they do. You see the people like the, some of their fans sometimes come after us, and I'll just be like surprised, like fuck, I didn't. I didn't know, but maybe in the subconscious mind, I saw it somewhere. You know what I mean? Like, you just saying, like, we do the exact same thing. Pardon my yeah, take. Man, maybe comment on the YouTube, uh, good yeah. punishment. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you're, on, if you're watching right now, leave a good comment on what the punishment should be. If you lose, you get last place in our fantasy football league. All right, let's get into our, uh, let's get into our last segment before we start getting into the, uh, the interviews with the Chargers. This segment is brought to you by Dude Wipes. The shittiest moment segment, still using toilet paper? Drop the TP and pick up Dude Wipes. The wet, extra large, flushable wipe that clears instead of smears. Wiping wet just cleans better than wiping dry. Get confidently clean with Dude Wipes that gets all the crap toilet paper left behind. Um, You can pick up Dude Wipes on Amazon or Target or Walmart nationwide. Dude Wipes is pivotal. Here, boy, you know, you get in there and you hit that sandpaper effect. Some little, some little dingleberry boys some on, on the TP can be in there. It can be mixed in those hairs, especially when you're showering, and you feel them, you peel them away, and you're like, God damn it, I wish this wouldn't stick to my hair. With dude wipes, you don't get that shit. You don't get that, that lazy TP that wants to sit behind in your ass crack, hanging on, hanging out with the hair around your butthole. You need to get uh, dude wipes to clean all of it away. Then you can get a little sandpaper effect and even maybe go a little farther. But the shittiest question, the shittiest moment, let's go with the worst parts of training camp. Let's go with the worst parts of training camp. I wrote a few down because I was thinking the other day, I was like, man, because there's times where you like miss training camp, but then you like try and remind yourself like why you don't miss training camp. Um, Shittiest parts of training camp. I'm going to say going live. When you have live periods, when you're in the thick of training camp, and co- the coaches want like a live period every day. The very first live might get you a little spicy, get you a little sauce up, especially if you're somebody trying to make the roster. You're like, okay, let's fucking turn it up. You go go line live or something like that, although go line is fucking a bloodbath at times. But going live when your body is just, it's like when you wake up, when you wake up in bed, you feel it in your feet, your ankles, your knees, you're getting down, you're trying to do some movement, you're trying to do some yoga, some stretches to get your blood flowing a little bit. You feel them calluses on your feet. You feel them aches in your joints. And you're like, I'm in the last thing I want to do. I hope coach doesn't call live period. And it's hot as fuck out there. And the live period gets called up like, hey, I hear there's going to be some live today. The ones don't have to go, but the twos and threes are going to make you guys go live. Like move the ball, the full field or a full period of live. You're like in scrimmage and you're just like, man, fucking for what? That's one. Another one, chafing. If you're not loaded up with that gold bond, dude, chafing in camp is the fucking worst. Cause you're wearing like, you know, spandex, you're wearing all that stuff. But 
at the tip top of your thighs, man, your ass crack, you could start chafing. And if you get in some ba a bad chafing situation, which I've been in before, it sucks. It is the most uncomfortable shit. You feel like a pussy because you're like, you're kind of like waddling a little bit and you kind of want to tell people, but you don't want to tell people. Chafing sucks. And then the, another, sh another shitty part, this is probably the worst feeling, is when there starts to get a rumor floated around that the second half of the day is going to get canceled or you're going to have a movie night only to get in the mindset that you're, you're not going to be on the field. Like, oh, hell yeah, this is coming at the perfect time in camp. You start joking with your boys only to learn that nothing is canceled and you're going out for that afternoon practice or jog through whatever it is. And then you, you also learn on top of that, you have to sit in meetings after that shit. And not even meetings are canceled. But when you, you get pranked, you get, you get duped into thinking that it's movie night or the second half of the day is canceled and only for it to be a rumor. That really pisses you off. It happened, it happened one year with the Titans where we thought it was going to be a movie night because we would do movie nights in Washington. Um, but that really pissed me off. But those are probably the worst parts about Those are the shittiest parts of training camp. Y'all do it. Y'all ever do two minutes? Oh, yeah. For, two minutes sucks. For, for me, granted, I played D3, so it's a lot different. But... Like when you, we would always you mean offense. Yeah, two minute on offense, and we would always do it first period of the day. You're done stretching and stuff. You're not you even, two minutes to start practice. Yeah, you're not even really ready to do anything, and next thing you know, you're going down the field and two. Like and everybody knows, like you're nonstop running, and as, and as a receiver, like you are cooked by like 15 minutes into practice and. Now you I think, now every, I think everybody hates practicing two minute, dude, because you're right. I mean, being, it's like I can sit here like, oh, being a white linebacker in two minutes, like you're, you're not in a more vulnerable spot. But B, I, being a receiver and you got to run fucking every route, it's tempo, get on the ball, it's clock management. The only one who can seem to enjoy it's probably the fucking quarterback. Because we're always doing two minute at the end of practice, and you're nobody's one to do two minute after doing all those periods of everything else. First thing. Dog. Vrabe sometimes would do put the ball down like right after stretch. So you're not even any type of warmed up and you're doing put the ball down, like put the ball down, move the ball, like competition out there popping, ready to go. No individual, nothing to really lube yourself up from outside of the bullshit, bullshit calisthenics you do in the, in the warm up. That competition stuff you do in camp though. Like, did you guys ever do like, not necessarily one on ones, but we we did this thing called ten lines. You line up on the goal line, and you have like that rubber thing in between you, and it's just mano a mano, just whoever can push somebody back. The first Oklahoma drill, like it wasn't Oklahoma drill because it was just like you're lined up like offense and defensive line, and it's just like a blocking drill, and like you just literally just have to drive the other person back. We didn't do that in, in the in the NFL, but we did like the first two years in college at Nebraska. You're standing around like, man, I hope coach don't put me up against some motherfucker no we like the way we did it like we would call each other out like nice i like that like i, I immediately go after the kicker we like i we had bring like, your ass out here we had like an all-american corner and everybody knew it was me versus him so like every single time we did it it was always him and i your boy won a lot of the time you want that dude you know you're stronger than in the weight room dude, this dude was stronger than me and he's a beast and he still is but like we just always got him in the leverage game. Yeah, I, I love that. Get under him, get fucking drive the pads. Yeah. Ah man, again, it's like the you miss it, and then some parts of you just don't miss all that physical that physicality. But football is just amazing, dude. You're imposing your will on somebody else, and you're doing it with a with a a group. You know what I mean? Everybody's kind of got like a different role, a different element, a different fit in the scheme. You're all trying to kind of accomplish the same thing. Ah, I fucking love it, man. Let's get in these. Uh, how long have we been going? An hour. Fuck. Let's get in these interviews. Um, if you're new here, we always do long ass. We call them intros. I don't even know why we call them intros. This is just the podcast. Uh, but again, if you've been sticking around, make sure to subscribe, leave comments. Let's get into these uh, interviews with the Chargers, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Austin Eckler. Um, 
brought to us by Paramount Plus. They are sponsoring. They sponsored all of our training camp interviews, so they sponsored the whole entire LA trip. Shout out to the boys. Stream Paramount Plus, you know, on your smart TV. But without further ado, here are the interviews. First stop at the training camp tour, Los Angeles, California, where the Chargers were sitting here with Austin Eckler. Uh, one of the best running backs in the entire league and also Will's one old... Best, one of the best landlords in the game. Yeah, the best landlords in the game. <laughs> yeah. When awesome. you were at the Raiders, you stayed at his place, yeah, right? I, he charged me rent. I paid rent. There was, and there was. He's a phenomenal landlord. He's a businessman. <laughs> Is he? Yeah, yeah. He's got a couple no doubt, things going no on. You got an app. App. You got real estate. Real estate. A lot of nonprofits. Yep, nonprofits. You got you, Jarrell Casey, Juju. You guys just yep. built. We just built the weight room right down the beach, right down the street here for uh, Long Beach Poly. Yeah, so a lot, lot of stuff going on. Lots yeah, he stuff. does a lot of stuff. No okay. shit. How was Will as a, uh, I guess, a land? What is, yeah, what did you think when you got back? Yeah. How, how was I as a tenant? I mean, there wasn't really much in the house. Like There, I, there wasn't. Like, I just got the house. So I was like, look, man, there's not a lot in there. There's enough to get by, though. And so that's, I guess that was enough. So it wasn't much, too much anything, to tear up anyway. Anything you saw, you're like, oh, I bet. Uh, there was a, there was some food left in the fridge. Damn. But I mean, it that if that's it, then I'm just like ah, whatever. Like, we'll yeah. take out your throat yeah, in the I'll garbage that. yourself. I had a couple of the uh, but everything J else was intact. JP and Garrett were out there, and we, I burnt a pizza in the house. <sighs> a little smoke coming out of the yeah, oven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little smoke coming out of the oven. Yeah. You still own that place now? Yeah. yeah when you think about, we'll get to football in a second. But when you think about the ending of football, like what is your end goal with all these different? Yeah. Paths? Uh, man, for me, I'm really trying to just continue to expand myself, expand my capabilities and put myself in positions to actually challenge those. Mm -hmm. um, and so even like right now, I've, I've basically doubled my team this, this summer and uh, I have two new things that I'm starting. I'm starting this website um, that's like a big aggregate of like all the NFL players, like foundations and like merch lines and things like that. So it's like a one-stop shop. And then I have like this Discord event company that I'm starting. So all of these things are always going on. And I think I find myself where I, I get like, I get impatient. I want to go do more, you know, like football is going on, but it's like, okay, I, have, I still have time to do mm -hmm. stuff. And so I, I continue to build these different like situations where I can build a, a, a team around a company, build a company, let that thing operate. And then I build another one and I do another one. And so that's where I am right now. And I've been doing that for like four years now. So uh, all my endeavors are kind of starting to add up and starting to grow this empire. How, go ahead, Bob. I was going to say, how do you uh, go about compartmentalizing all that while playing football? Yeah. So making sure you're not in the meeting room thinking about yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Stuff so that you have really, when I'm here at football, when it's time for football, like I am totally locked in at football. Just like when I'm thinking about those things, it's like I'm only hyper focused on those. Um, and so when I'm here and going into year seven, um, you know how it is. You you learn how to be a pro. You learn how how the offenses work. You know, pretty much every offense now. I've, I've learned three of them. They're all the same. We just call it different things. Mm -hmm. um, and I've gotten to a routine. I love working out. Like that's that's what I do. And so that helps. Where it's like I'm already wanting to work and do the things that are going to help me with football um, just on my own. And so then when it comes time to football, I'm already ready to go physically. And now it's just learning the mental stuff. When you came out uh, and got in the NFL, when did you start to feel more comfortable about doing stuff outside of football? Cause... Oh, great question. Because... Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I appreciate that. <laughs> when, I, when I first started, right, I was, I was undrafted, six string. Let's basically go. had a scratch and claw to get on the team show up on special teams. And for me, that was what I was hyper-focused on, just making sure I could implement myself into this league and try to make an impact and be consistent and show that, okay, I can I can play at this level with this team or some other team. Ended up being this team and then got a routine going, was consistent. Um, that's what I would like to say. Like people say, oh, you're this great running back. Like what differentiate you? I'm just really consistent with, within my job. Um, you, you'd be surprised how far that can take you. But um once I got into my second year, I really figured out how to start being a pro. So after my second year, going into my third year, I was like, okay, like I got a good grasp on this. I've, I've pretty much established myself. You know, I've had success. The coaching staff trusts me, right? I know how to actually get ready for, for season. Um, and then that's when I started getting into real estate and bought my first rental properties. Who were some of the veteran mentors that you like learned from and be like, okay, after Ooh. year two, I've, I've kind of learned how to be a pro. Who are some of the guys you watch from afar I or mean, directly influenced? You know, in the locker room, um, you know, there's so many different types of people. Um, there's so many different cliques and things like that. And so we had our running back room and Melvin Gordon was like the guy that was in front of me. He was, he was, uh, that was just the, the number one in, in our locker room for a while in, our, in, a, in the running back room. Um, and for, for us, like, during the time here, like we all work together, but when you go home, you're on your own. 
Um, and so like when we were here, like, yeah, in the meeting room, like, he, like I see how much he understands the game and things like that. So that was something I was able to learn from here. But then you know how it gets when you get outside the doors, it's on you. What do you right. want to do? Um, and it goes back to even how I even got to this point. Like I was so focused in, in college too, but I thought I was going into business. And so I was hyper-focused on business, building my, my connections, my relationships, my capabilities in the business world. But that that dr- that drive and grind was also playing over into my football career where I was trying to increase my scholarship. And so that m- demeanor coming into uh, the pro level, right? It was the same thing. It was like when it was, when I was done with the season or on my own time, like I'm, I'm studying, I'm like, I'm making sure that I can pick up any little thing that I can to make sure I'm consistent and do my job. Cause you don't want it to be something that you didn't do to cause you to fail. Right. Where it's like, ah, oh, I should have, I should have done this. And that would like, nah, I couldn't do that to myself. Right. You know? When you're, uh, you bring up Melvin Gordon. Yeah. Uh, he's been on our podcast. Mel, Love Mel's Melly. Mel's fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah. We worked out this offseason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you you walk in your room, undrafted guy, scratching and claw, and you see this dude. He had the career he did at Wisconsin. You see him balling out in the league, and then you start to obviously overtake and essentially take his job at the end of the day. Like, was there ever a dynamic shift that you noticed throughout the time that he was here once you started to become the guy? No. Um, for us, it was, I, I mean... For me, I was like super high focused on whatever role I had. And in the beginning, it was just special teams. It was like, all right, Austin, you had a great, you know, preseason on special teams. Had like five tackles in special teams in the preseason games. Dog. And it was like, okay, yeah, this guy can run. He can tackle. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, I was decent at running back, but I wasn't making crazy plays. My plays that I were making was on special teams. So I'm, I'm running down on special teams. And then my third, my third game in, my rookie year, um, I get my first ever carry, and it was a 34-yard ripper right up the freaking middle for a touchdown. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, what was the play called? Uh, it was uh, 30 Cheese. 30 yeah, Cheese. It's a little trap play. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Cheese, mouse, trap. Yeah, yeah. We tra- have a whole yeah, bunch of codes, code names and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Something like a Ken Wilson hunt deal. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, rip it up. And, yeah, 34-yard touchdown. I'm just full of emotion. And I think that was kind of like, okay, like maybe this guy can play offense a little bit. Um, and then, actually, Brandon Oliver, the guy that was in front of me, ended up, like tweaking his hamstring or something. So then I did become the number two. And then I did start playing more offense my rookie year. And they're like, okay, like, yeah, he's consistent, knows what he's doing. You can trust him in the game. Um, and then the, going into the next year, it was, I was like half and half. Like, and it was like half offense, half defense. And then the next year after that was the year that Melvin held out for the first three games. And so then I was, they were like, okay, Austin's going to get a test. Let's see if he can hold the rope. Um, we come out. I have an overtime, like, touchdown. Um, I go off the first game. I had, like, three touchdowns, like, 160, 70 yards. Um, and then start establishing myself, like, okay, like, this guy can actually play football. And then they took me off of special teams, and I was just strictly Which playing offense. Love that. That'd be the best feeling in the world. Yeah, dude. yeah, yeah. So there's progression that you saw within. And really, it wasn't that I was doing anything crazy. I was just doing my job, doing it at a high level, doing it consistently. And, you know, it, it carries over into so many different things. You know, all the aspects that I have outside of football as well. Like I, I see in my mind where it's like, I take a project and I apply those same at the principles that I live by to it. And that's how I'm able to build and do so many because I'm not in the, in the weeds and doing, trying to do every little thing. I'm just trying to do my portion of it. And then I'll set up, and especially for the companies, I'll set up other people to do their portion of it. And my portion is to oversee it, right? Right. And when I'm in this room, it's like, okay, my portion is to play running back. Right. I'm not trying to do as much too much. I'm trying to play running back to the highest level that I possibly can. And the rest of the team is right. Those teams that I put around myself as well. Um, so it's, it's something that I can rinse and repeat and I can just keep doing. Yeah, man, you you've definitely you've obviously established yourself as like a premier back in the league. Mm-hmm. You're a businessman. You can tell you always see the wheels turning up top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, all yeah. the headlines with the uh, the running back market and everything else. Yeah. You see Dalvin Cook, he just took a, he just accepted a deal, Ezekiel Elliott. Yeah. Kind of softer deals, Juan short Barkley. term. Yeah. One year deals, franchise tags and all that. Yeah. You've been somebody who seems to be like one of the leaders of that running back group. Where do you see this market going? How do you see all this shifting? Like, what is the strategy in your mind as you see it from a bird's eye view? Yeah, um, you know, there's there's been a new narrative that's been coming out because of the, the contract situation that's going on. And for us as running backs right now, I think it's important for us to talk about it. And, and what we can do is one thing, which I think is amazing, is keep doing what we're doing right now as far as playing. Like, keep making a huge impact on your team. You know, there, there's average players in the NFL. But then there's the outliers. And those outliers are the guys that are setting the new markets, pushing the, the boundaries. And the reason they're doing that is because they're not the average. So when we have these narratives that are coming out where they're comparing the outliers to the average, it really hurts us. Mm-hmm. You know, and that, that's not fair to those guys. You know, you can't say, oh, well, running backs in general only get this many yards. Well, what about those guys? What about, you know, 
you know, Josh Jacobs, who just ran for 1,600 yards and all those touchdowns and basically carried the, Ra- the Ra- uh, Raiders offense. You know, what about Z? Or, uh, I mean, Saquon, what he's been doing. You know, Tony Pollard, those guys that are not the average, right? And when you compare them to that, you could probably justify, yeah, you shouldn't be paying anything. But you could do that for every position. You know, right. why are you doing that for the, for the running backs right now? And so for us, what I want us to do and what we've decided is let, let's keep talking about it. Let's try to change this narrative, understanding, make up, let people know that, hey, we can still make a big impact. And you see that. You go ask the Giants fans and the coaching staff how big of a, you know, impact Saquon is on the field right. to when he's not on the field. Um, and they'll tell you that. And so for us, it's, it's talking about that. And so people understand that you cannot compare the outliers to the average and then justify paying them because of that. Um, and then another thing that we need to do is continue to keep balling out, continue to do that. Right. And as we do that, I mean, time will show as it has in the past that yes, we can make an impact on our team. Um, and not, not all running backs make a huge impact, but the ones that do, we need them to step up. Like me, I, there's this theory around 28 year olds, like, Oh, they, you know, that's when they start dropping off. I'm 28. So it's on me. It's on my shoulders. Go out there and prove them wrong. You know, mm-hmm. Where do you see yeah. the market going? Like, where do you want it? Where do you guys like want it to go collectively? Yeah, I mean, I think I just want it to stay consistent, just like every other market is. You know, um, I'm not saying we have any guys that are pushing the top and need to you know, bust open the market cap right now and are the best new thing. Um, I think Christian's still at, at that level and holding it down at the top. You know, you could make some arguments from some other guys, but no one's even getting close to those types of um, contracts where it's like, you're telling me they're that far away and I, I, I can't believe that. I don't buy that. Um, and so there's been a decline um, as far as, you know, these re-upping of contracts. And, you know, we saw it with the franchise tag where it's like now, instead of giving Saquon, all those three guys, right, a chance to go get an open market, they've been tagged and they've been, you know, stuck at an artificial set number. Are they worth that? Maybe, maybe not, but they don't get an opportunity. And so you won't know. And so it messes up our market. So now when you're getting compared to people, how the market works, oh, well, Saquon's only getting 10, so we're going to give you less than that because you're not as good as him. But maybe he should be making 15, 16, 15. I don't know. We don't, no one's going to know because right. he never, never got to the open market. Because it seems like with a lot of position group, it's like the next guy up. Like the next guy up who's played well enough, he just resets the market. And then that guy resets the yeah, market. Yeah, exactly. You know, like it always, especially exactly. for offensive linemen, which is all I really know. Like some guy sets the market, and then six months later, there's a new line. Then there's a new yeah. line. One thing you brought up, a little bit ago that was a notable point is you're saying the biggest thing is for guys just to, to stay and keep balling for their team. Yeah. Was there ever a discussion for you guys like we need to hold out as a running back group? It's, because it seems like if you're being undervalued so much, someone must have brought that to the table. Like, do we just hold out of this whole thing? Yeah, no, it's definitely been brought up. Um, you know, and you can go back and forth or whether that's that's good or not. I just, I just know as a collective, uh, it puts a lot of pressure on not necessarily the older guys, but the younger guys. Right. You know, because it's like if you have a rookie or first year or second year or even a bubble guy, that's like, I need to make the team. And now you're asking them to hold out. It's like, man, that's that's a tough spot to put a, to, to put it anybody um, like you're not going to get paid either. So we're taking a risk here um, and getting everyone on board with that. It, it takes time and it takes, I think, a, a reason that would be bigger than just the running backs. And maybe, you know, as a collective of the entire union. Um, but no, I, I think it comes down to everyone's individual you know kind of situation like do you think that's going to be a power move for you not to sign your franchise tag or to hold out um based off of you know your scenario and it's it's all individual what you what your what does your team think you can do what are the conversations that you have and because maybe the team is interested in getting something done but you're close but you're not you're not on the same page yet so maybe you hold out to maybe kind of close that small gap or if you're really far apart it's like ah i don't know if you can hold out it might not do anything you know so I think there's different factors that play into everyone's situation. A lot of different variables. Do you feel like, uh, what are the conversations like when it comes to the thought of the running back having their own union? No, no. Um, I mean, I've heard narratives like that. I think those are coming from outside sources. I've never heard any of our guys say that. Um, It doesn't really make sense to me um, because if we're not utilizing our own union that we have now, which is a lot more powerful because it's all of us, then what makes we think that we're going to do it on our own? Um, right. And I mean, who's going to run that, you know, who's going to set that up? Like, it's not just like, Oh, we just start a union. The union is us. We are the, we are the union, right, we're the right, players, right. you know? So if you want to do something, let's do it. Let's get it done. Like yeah. you already have the power to do what you want to do with your individual union. You know, like we can do it right now. What are you waiting for? You know, if you want to start your own union, why would you not? Like conversations like we had, like that's what it is. It was the running backs. There was no, there was no other position besides running backs on that. So basically we already have that in a way. So I, don't, I just, I think that's extra work that's unnecessary. 
Brother, we appreciate you coming on. I know it's literally 12.02 right now. You nice. got to work out at 12.05. Nice. Um, we could clearly talk to him for hours. For hours, yeah, dude. And this we we got to run it back. We got to run it back yeah. in the bus. Yeah. No, I, I, know, I know you guys have been trying to get me out there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, we'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. Uh, hopefully get it done this next off season. And I'll have a whole empire to, to unload on you guys and let you guys know how it's going. Yeah, yeah man. That'd be yeah. awesome. Yeah. Awesome, folks. Love Good, appreciate right. you. Good stuff, boys. We interrupt this episode to bring you the official water of Bustin' with the Boys and Barstool Sports Body Armor, the official sports drink uh, to sport water, to sports drinks. Body Armor keeps us hydrated all day long, whether we're talking, watching, or even playing sports. Body Armor is the go-to choice. Real hydration, real ingredients, no bullshit impact with electrolytes. Body Armor has great tasting flavors like strawberry banana and blue raspberry. The best athletes and podcasters in the world hydrate with body armor guys like christian mccaffrey will compton taylor Wan, alex morgan and the latest athlete to join the team joe burrow um honestly i enjoy a lot of fucking flavors of body armor my favorite part of body armor is going into any gas station and walking up you know when you walk up to that fridge and you're just excited to know like what flavors do they have in stock am i gonna go with the water oh that's kind of lame like, let's go with a nice, tasty sports drink. My favorite one is the uh, is the fruit punch. I'm a big fruit punch guy. Um, but I do enjoy looking through all the flavors and seeing them in a nice, well-lit refrigerator at a gas station. Available in all stores nationwide. Head on over to Body Armor, to the Body Armor store, or I just butchered that. Head on over to the Body Armor store on Amazon and get yours today. Drink Body Armor. Back to the episode. Gentlemen, welcome to Bustin' with the Boys. Yes, sir. First question. E-B. Who's the biggest tryhard on the team? The biggest tryhard on try the hard? team. Yeah, tryhard. Try you pretty much can pick any defensive guy. Yeah, defense. I feel like defensive players always try hard. Yeah, they just, yeah, they're extra. Even walkthroughs. Yeah. It's a walkthrough, bro. What you doing? Any defensive guy you want to pick, he try hard. To give some some defense now for the for the defensive side, the offensive line is is taught to, to go at a, an unreasonable pace. Unnaturally, though. You think those big guys want to be running up and down the field like that? No, but I think they're afraid of being yelled at. <laughs> but it comes from the coaches. They, like, put some urgency yeah. on, like, hey, we need some... We yeah, yeah, move, finish down the line. Yeah, finish with the ball carrier. Yeah. Keenan goes running double route, 60 yards, gets tackled at the five-yard line. You got to get Not your ass trotting down there. Yeah. You know? Joey Bosa, though, you uh, he's a guy you look at and you think... Probably not a try-hard guy in Joey's practice. probably the only one that don't... Khalil don't really try hard either, like... Yeah. Because it's like an understanding, like, I would have made the play. Most of the guys is like, I got to get to my spot. I can't let you block me. I got to do this. I, like, bro, relax, bro. Like, <laughs> you're probably not even going to make the play. Bro, you, 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 play. You, you bring up a great point. Like, getting to a point where you know, like, you're good enough. You made the roster. Not only made, you, made the roster, right. but you're a fucking star. Like, when did that creep in for you? Because um, there was a little uh, bit of, there had to be some time there in the beginning. You were a little unsure. Yeah, I say after, probably after I made the Pro Bowl. Yeah. I, I already was, thought I was pretty good, but then I made the Pro Bowl, and it was like, all right, I'm, you made the Pro Bowl. I'm one of the guys. That was like 2016. That was after my ACL, so 2016, I think, mm. maybe 2017. You you did you had comeback player of the year in yeah, yeah, 17, yeah. right? That was the same year. Okay. So it was 16 season, 17 Pro Bowl. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. That is that is wild. And from from then on, did it change your work ethic or just how you practice? No, I still practice hard. I'm not I'm not try hard, but I I, I go pretty hard in practice. You do. You don't think I go hard? No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. You don't think I go hard, bro? What's he, nah, hey, we be Mike, going what's he hard. like as a teammate? What's Kenny like as a teammate? Oh, uh, amazing. You be know, real. No, nah, I'm being serious. Uh, he's like a coach, really. I mean, he everybody go to him for, you know, examples of how to run a route. Uh, what do you think on this coverage? If he playing me like this, how should I run it? I feel like a lot more people go to him as far as, you know, running routes before a coach. Yeah. yeah, you are nasty. You're nasty. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're route running. Is <laughs> you fucking route running. It is. Uh, did, has that always been like a really important thing to you, or did you realize early? Uh, I was. Like, I've always be been me. shifty. I, I used to play running back, and yeah. I, I was like, uh, not Barry Sanders, obviously, but I was like, that was my play style. Like, yeah, Barry Sanders, LT. I make guys miss. You know, tall. And then oh, got, I got yeah, my sophomore year in high school, I went up to like six three. So <laughs> then I just had to take it out to receiver. But you're I can't dare Henry, bro. Same play style. Nah, I'd have been Le'Veon Bell or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Shifty. Yeah, hey, Le'Veon Bell was different. You know what I'm saying? He, he was moved. Like, he was almost like stand still for a little bit. Yeah, he was different. And it'd be like a glitch in Madden. Like, dudes yeah. were just kind of falling around. He'd like stand and wait for the hole yeah. to open and then get Yo. in there. Any other running back do that, the coach is yelling. No you doubt. Hit the hole. <laughs> but Mike Tomlin, dude, he's, he just seems like he's got a way with mm-hmm. unique personalities. Yeah. Like Roethlisberger, AB, and Le'Veon on the same team. Yeah. 
No, no question. Bouncy and Brothers, Bouncy Brothers, v- or not Villanueva. Local, but yeah, yeah, Villanueva. that's crazy. Is there an art to running a route? Oh, absolutely. You you got to have a uh, vision. It's definitely art, man. You got to set this guy up. You got to paint a picture where he don't, where he believes it. You know. What's like a, something practical that you're able to just like say out loud? Because I feel like a lot of it too is probably just got to be instinct. Yeah, a lot of it is instinct, but I think more than that, it's it's leverage. Um, Once you know a guy's leverage, I can make him play the leverage more than he's supposed to. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can really make him. Explain that for people that don't. So, like, if he has inside leverage, um, it starts with the safety. So, if it's two safeties, he's going to have inside leverage. If it's one safety, he's going to have outside leverage. So, once you can figure that out and you can see that pre snap, if he has outside leverage, I'm taking him outside as far as I want to take him. Mm-hmm. And now the now the inside is that much more open. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with the outside. If he's inside leverage, I'm taking him inside. Now, is that so something I'm, you had to learn early? Oh, absolutely. Did you yeah. learn that you early? Be comfortable or? with it. I mean, like for a rookie, it's hard to do. I, I tell him all the time, like, look at the safeties. If it's too high, he got inside leverage. But it's hard to I like. Still ain't comfortable. Yeah, with it. you ain't you ain't just about <laughs> to come. Out what Mike? He said he's still not comfortable. <laughs> I do it sometimes, but yeah, I feel like he push it to like the farthest point to where it's like. But he still do it though. Yeah, like in your mind when you're pushing somebody with outside leverage outside, I'm like, he's are you thinking about move. that red line in practice? Yeah, I'm like, he's not gonna move, and then I'm gonna come back in. He's yeah. gonna be waiting on me. But you try to push him out to the Gatorade pile. I'm yeah. taking him. Yeah, <laughs> he's taking, taking him out there. And it I know he got to play it. He got to play it. Yeah. Do you all self scout? Do you all self scout a lot to where you're like, okay, I need this route to match up to what people are obviously preparing for, and this is how I can make it look like this to change it up. And that's where the art part come in. You make everything look the same, and you know what I'm saying. They don't know what's coming, so. It's you know, tough. That, hey, it's that tough. is wild. Yeah. So playing offensive line, I don't know how it is for you, but like just watching you on the outside, it's like that's cool. It just seems like they're running. Yeah. It yeah. seems like they're running. And then like I know. Yeah. <laughs> and then legit, you, like, you sit there and you're like, you know, two jet, blah, 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 blah. And you're like, all right, boys, good luck. And just run like a slant. And you're like, he didn't really do anything, did he? <laughs> no. You're not really thinking about leverage and all that stuff. It's yeah. wild how many like mini games are being played on no, one, yeah. on it's, one it's snap. That's for sure, especially when you're playing against a good guy. Yeah. And he knows his leverage, but he don't really have to play that leverage. That's why I like playing against the Patriots. Mm. They're tough, man, because, like, it's one high, so they're playing outside leverage, but they'll play a head up, and they won't move. Mm. Just like, man, I don't know how I'm going to get in there today. It's wild how the Patriots, like, I mean, they obviously have talent on their team, but they've made a living for themselves being, like, a team that just, like, is really well coached and get mm-hmm. it done. Yep. Right. And then you think a one-on-one outside, a guy like you would be like, oh, this is no problem. This yeah. dude's not as talented as me, blah, blah, blah. But they're just so dialed the fuck in. Dialed. And they just spin the wheel on de- defense. Yeah. Like they could run a 3-4 one week, and the next week they're running a 5 Exactly. Down you can't like, game well, plan. We have we, no idea what we're going like to do. Every time we played them, wrong. We're wrong. Dude, and then they bring Lin Chung back in the day. He'd go down and play the yep. safety. Yep. And it'd be like, you like now count him, and you're counting all that. It, yeah. it would and, and their defense, like, they're known for trying to take out the, you know, the better weapon mm-hmm. as yeah. much as they can. So even though the dude's playing head up, he probably knows that he's got some inside help oh, somewhere. Sure. But you say, hey, when you're when you're playing the Patriots, Mike, like, early in your career, this man's getting doubled over here. It had to be nice. Can't oh, yeah, double yeah, both yeah. guys. <laughs> I had like it early on. And then they started trying to double <laughs> both of us. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and they had Stefan and JC. It was like, man, what are we doing? Like, it was like punt. No, it was crazy. It was double vice. Really? No, it was single. It was me and Stefan, and then they double him with JC. Like that's yeah. you got to do that. You guys play fantasy? No, I don't. No fantasy football. No. If you look you guys, at the numbers you guys on the team, I think Eckler does. does. Yeah. does for I think sure. Play for sure. I think he got his own. Y'all, y'all, y'all are some heavy hitters. Yeah. Y'all are some heavy hitters. Sometimes you gotta like pick and choose. Like, which one do we think is gonna get the ball more yeah. this week? Got to. <laughs> got I know to. if I'm on the, I know <laughs> if I'm on the team, like I'm coming up. If I have one of you guys draft, I'm gonna say, hey, I need a. I need something this week. I need something this week. Anybody that's don't get mad at me, bro. <laughs> Do what? I say don't get mad at me. Now, if you don't put, if you don't put up numbers, I, I'm, you know, Jay Reed, like I always had Jordan Reed on my fantasy, and I'd come up to him and be like, hey, you like, caught two balls last week. I'm going to need you to pick it up. I'm going to move on. <laughs> I'm going to have to move on. It's yeah, crazy. I'm going to have to move on from do you, you. Do you guys get uh, tweeted at quite a bit from people on their uh, fantasy yeah. teams? Yeah. yeah. Have you guys ever been like a Todd Gurley situation where you get the ball and the touchdown's right there, but you know for the betterment of winning the game, you can't. You can't score. I've not been in that situation. I've never been in yeah. that situation. What no. do you think you would do in that situation? Was that? Oh no. Because to me, selfishly, I'm thinking stats, baby. Yeah. We had contract year coming up. It could be three years away. They got to remember this touchdown. Yeah. Yeah. You know. What was the situation on Todd? Hey, Todd. So it's like usually like in a four minute situation. Were they up already? Will basically wave the white flag and they'll like yeah. let you score. It's more of a running back thing. They'll like let you score to get the ball back, only being down nine, yeah. and now it gives them more time to do that yeah. onside kick. So the situation for you would be... I think for a running back, you got to just go down. 
got to go down. But for you, you can kind of play. I am a receiver. I'm not always in this type of Come situation. Come on, baby. You get your I, bubble hey. screen. You get your bubble screen, and you like, coach. We have two possessions. What yeah. you want me to do? Yeah, like, exactly. You just gotta get a stop. We can't let him score twice. <laughs> we, I, gotta I, gotta get a stop. we can't let him score twice. Just though. let Jeez. Bosa and Khalil go to work, bro. And just like, hope they to God. Come on now. I need you. Yeah, Mike. For you, when you got draft, like, actually, let's go back to just draft in general for both of you. When you guys were, you were twenty fourteen. 13. 2013. Uh, where did you guys want to go? You've been here long enough now. It's okay if you don't say the charges, but where did you want to go? Hmm. I really didn't have a place I wanted to go. Who were you a fan of growing up? I like Randy Moss, Adrian Peterson, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but I didn't want to go to Minnesota. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where'd you go? Where'd you grow up at? I know you went to South Clemson. Carolina. I grew up yeah, in so South you're Carolina. You're like coming out yeah. West Coast. Yep. Yeah. It's far. You never thought about going to University of South Carolina? Yeah. It was an option. It was an option. <laughs> oh, our boy Jay Hove. Hove, he's a big, he's a gamecock. I were, uh, yeah. That's why I was going to commit. And what then, happened? <laughs> he went to Clemson. <laughs> yeah. Well, <he> said, <laughs> On the you day of when I went to commit, I just picked the Clemson hat. Wait, 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 wait. I That's grabbed not, I, I, That is I, no I, way. crazy. Hey, I know. swear. To I Carolina. told my family I'm going to South Carolina. It was like 30 minutes from the crib. I'm like, yeah, we going there. Uh... And then on commitment day, I grabbed the South Carolina hat, put it down, grabbed the Clemson one. My mom was yeah, like, what no are you doing? What are you <laughs> doing? There's no bro. fucking way. He's confused. There's no way you just, you had that epiphany. <laughs> but it's crazy because I had the commitment day and my coach, my high school coach had a long talk with me because he knew I was going to South Carolina, but he wanted me to go to Clemson. And he had a long talk with me before, like we had to delay the thing and all. What and were the he points? was leaning what towards the Clemson, so I picked you? Clemson. What, were like the, what was the reason why you shouldn't uh, He was to... just talking about quarterback situation. Uh, South Carolina didn't have, like, a real elite quarterback. Mm-hmm. Like, Clemson got some guys coming in. Uh, receivers, I had to learn from Sammy and them. South Carolina didn't have nobody. But that was my main thing. I'm like, I go to South Carolina, I'm going to be the star. Like, I'm going to go right now, be the star. Mm-hmm. Clemson you get a little had... bit of cash. Did you get a little bit of cash? Nah. <laughs> 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 that just came out. You know, everybody kind of talks about right. it. All right, you can't get in trouble anymore. NIL's a thing. Clemson's yeah. clean and clear. Yeah, yeah, nah. You got some cash. I ain't got no cash. <laughs> New car? No. Free I meal? Was, I was driving a Buick. Hey, Buicks like are a luxury vehicle. Buick, vehicles. like a... It's hard to old, believe. Old, old Buick. Up. Yeah, point minutes. A to point B. Yeah. Locked in. It's cool. That yeah, better me. Yeah, how much did you get paid to go to college? I wish, man. I was on my way to going to Alabama, though. We probably would got some bread. No question. I didn't get none though. I mean, it's not Alabama. My people people wouldn't take none though, huh? So they were trying to. Nah, they was they yeah they was there they was going they was going they was going to show some love. They was going to show Alabama. It's like almost like they almost say it. They almost say at this point like they pay people. Yeah, they definitely. We had Derek on the pond. He's like, I got paid in rings, which is a hell of a thing to say. Yeah, that shit goes hard. I went on a visit. Everybody got Chrysler's. You know, it's crazy. (laughs) Say that again. Everybody, (laughs) everybody at the dorm had a Chrysler. (laughs) Had a Chrysler. Chrysler. Three hundred. Three hundred. 300 yeah. crush. I'm like, Jeeps. I'm like, bro, what's up? How y'all? Chrysler 300 has got to be no the number one drug dealing car. Come on. <laughs> Come on. There's no way. They said they hook it up when you get there? Systems. Rams. You hear about Matthew Stafford when he was going to leave early? No. He came out to his mailbox, and there was $500,000 sitting in his mailbox for him to stay for another year. Now, obviously, he was the first overall pick. He's like, this is fucking nothing. That's great. And he ended up leaving. But SEC rolls that like that, nothing. dude. Yeah. SEC Take the 500? Like that. Crazy. No, I think he gave it back. I, I didn't hear from him. This is like the game of telephone. Friend oh, okay. tells a friend tells a friend, now I'm here. Yeah. You know? I would have kept just that. Telling this, this nah, we... You would have kept it? What? No question. Somebody took it. I don't know where it's at. It's like, <laughs> yeah, once you leave college. <laughs> I don't know where it's at. <laughs> I don't know where it's at. in the mailbox. I ain't heard of that. That's what I'm saying. What? Crazy. <laughs> Take my mail every day. But you think dudes leaving college and then they get in trouble. Like Reggie Bush is a perfect example. Like they took his Heisman away. Yeah. Like I'm Reggie Bush. I'm just going to go to a trophy shop and be like, hey, make me a replica of the Heisman. I won that thing. Yeah. It doesn't fucking matter. Clear as day. Clear as day. They do yeah. need to give that shit back to him. They got to give that shit back to him in a hurry. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. Mike, when you got drafted here, uh, what was the dynamic like between y'all two? Because you're obviously a first round pick. You're very well, established. Yeah, Comeback yeah, yeah. player of the year, Pro Bowls. See, it was different because when I first got here, I was dealing with my back. So I miss OTAs, training camp, like the first four weeks of the season. So I was just in the rehab room just trying to get right. I wasn't really in meetings like that. I was just trying to get healthy. So it was a little different. It started off slow. And then once I hit the field, film room, my main thing was how could I learn defenses to make my job a little easier? And just hearing them talking meetings and stuff just made everything a lot, a lot quicker for me, learning a lot faster and just, yeah, play fast. Was there a- 
Go ahead. Was there a, like a dynamic between you two coming in, like you being a first round pick? What, how, what year were you when Mike came in? I was a uh, year four. I was, so, did you sign your same contract yet? The year he signed was uh, was the year I made the Pro Bowl. Yeah. So that was right after the ACL. Now, was there a little bit of a, like, are they trying to replace me? Because you guys are similar players. That's how I was feeling when we first did it. Yeah. What? I was sitting next to Trav like, oh, Trav, they trying me right now. <laughs> they trying me. Dude, it, it is stressful sitting there watching the draft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being like, I'm like, they trying me. But we drafted the first round receiver this year. Thought they was trying me again. <laughs> they trying me again. They think I'm getting no. <laughs> oh. Did you uh, extend it at this point when they had drafted him? In the uh, first yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah. Oh, so you there's no trying you. No. Um, is, we're, bringing, well, like, we're just bringing in more talent to help him out. No, so no, like no. Time. So, I mean, he was tired. extended hey, while I was here, I think. Coming. I got extended he's, while Mike was here, so. Right? No, I, I actually got extended the year before I tore my ACL. And then again. So that was, I got I got extended the year he got here. Mm-hmm. And then I, did, I got another one uh, three years later. Congratulations on that. Appreciate it. Yeah, it is big time. You were the same year as, uh, like, you, you, Corey Davis, and one other receiver. Ross. You guys won, like, three in a row, right? Ross. John Ross. John Ross. Man. John uh, Ross. My dog dude. retired this year. Uh, Every fantasy person was like, this is the guy I'm taking. For sure. Early. Yeah. Ross? Austin. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you run a 40 like that, you know the casual watchers. Oh, yeah. I'm sitting there going, this is my fucking fantasy. Gross this guy's going to get directed. Yeah. He's looking for that Tyreek Hill, yeah. man. When you're coming out, and obviously you guys get picked, boom, 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 like three in a row. Are you thinking, like, there's a little rivalry here? Nah, me and Corey were training together for the yeah. combine. Yeah. Corey's so. an awesome dude. Yeah, he cool. He, he cool as fuck. We was uh, training. We was talking about it. I think he had, like, hurt his ankle or something. So he was just kind of rehabbing there in XOs. So, yeah, we was talking about it. Uh, we was just talking about who's going first. There wasn't a little something there. Yeah. Like, I want to go first. I talked to uh, Tennessee. Tennessee came and worked me out at Clemson. He was like, yeah, we're going to draft you. All right, cool. See, that's the crazy thing about the draft, bro. <laughs> it is wild. <laughs> a lot to your face. You know what I mean? Tell me I was, we're going to draft you. We love you. If you get to us, it's over with. Yeah, like, they came and worked me taking out. You. Everything went smooth. But, yeah. Went the other direction. Yeah, so when the Titans came on, the, they were the first one to pick, right? Yeah, they was, was five. That's when the domino effect happened. Yeah. Because they took... Uh, Corey and they took a Dory Jackson. Five, six, seven. Y'all was five, six, seven. Five, six, seven. I was, I was seven. Yeah. Oh, that had to hurt. Ross was at the meets. Yeah. Yeah. So how did you feel when they, when they say, "Hey, I'm going to draft you," then all of a sudden, they take another wide receiver? I wasn't tripping. It was Tennessee, so I wasn't really tripping. <laughs> that, hurt. that hurts to hear. <laughs> hey, that I hurts to hear. <laughs> oh, that is funny. Dude. I wasn't really tripping. I mean, Philip Rivers. Yeah, I talk, came to talk, a good situation. Talk about Philip Rivers. Great Dude, situation all time, to come into. Obviously, never got a chance to win the Super Bowl. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But talk about Phil and then the, obviously the difference, the differences with him and, and Justin. Um, like you said, uh, being a coach on the field, Phil was definitely, he ran the whole offense, like meeting room, everything, go through Phil. Uh, change the plays at the line. Phil here to play, come in the uh, helmet. Nah, we ain't running that. He changed, changed the whole play. Uh, yeah, without Phil, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I'm probably not here right now. Sure. Really? Yeah, Phil was the guy, man, for sure. How long did it take you two to get that kind of connection where you're like, this is my dude? Um, Probably about halfway through my rookie season. Mm-hmm. So your rookie year was... Yeah, my rookie year was solid. Uh, I wasn't even going to play like that, but then uh, Malcolm Floyd got hurt. And then I got right in, and um, I was kind of the number one. Uh, It was Malcolm, Eddie Royal, he had like a toe injury or something like that, so he didn't play that much. So it was really just me and Gates mm-hmm. and Danny Woodhead. So, oh, Danny Woodhead, that's yeah. right, man. Damn. Oh, is it? I would uh, hear that Philip Rivers. I don't know how far away he lived, but he would be like watching film and doing everything on his car ride. Like driver, the yeah, yeah. yeah. So he went from here to San Diego, so his whole ride is film study. He just had a driver in a, a Sprinter van. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he lived in like Encinitas or something like that. Carl's back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rancho, Rancho Santa Fe. It's like an hour drive. Yeah. For sure. There and back. Man, Phil lead a game. We play Sunday away. Mm-hmm. We get on the bus. He already film studying, breaking down the blitz, blitz tape. Next team. That's fucking wild. He ain't playing around. He wasn't. Because he got to run the blitz meet. He's got to run the blitz. So he's studying film for the next week already. He's got to do the blitz he's meet. He's already put that one in the past once you guys get yes, on the bus. He has no. How do you guys feel when you're coming back from planes and you might not have the best game? Like, how, how quick are you to watch that film? I probably won't watch it. You won't watch it? <laughs> nah. Really? If I had a bad game? Yeah, so for me, if I had a bad game, I would literally be on that plane, essentially in a blender. 
in a blender. <laughs> yeah, just sitting there mentally like, what the fuck just happened torturing here? Torturing yourself. Yeah, torturing myself for the back. hour flight yeah, back I mean, or hour flight back. I've been doing that since like high school, though. Where you no had question. those couple bad plays, and then all you think about is the bad plays. Some five touchdowns, but damn, I could have caught that yeah. one, though. On yeah. The yeah. All the time. Fucking, it, it's a mental warfare for yeah, sure. Yeah, people, yeah. I feel like people don't understand like the NFL is really... Like, you don't just show up on Sundays and play. Like, no, I feel like no. the casual fan still doesn't know that. No. And you go and you have a bad game or a game you don't want. This is it. This is going to be the one. You see the matchup and you're like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm going to fucking end this guy. Oh, yeah. And then it goes the exact opposite and you're like. Trying to reset I, the season. fraud. Is it over <laughs> so for me? Crazy. What was it like uh, for you, your perspective, Philip Rivers? Uh, Similar. Uh, I feel like he's someone I needed coming in as a rookie. Just somebody who was future Hall of Famer. Uh. Having a guy like Keenan kind of take a lot of pressure, you know, off my game, just not getting all the attention. Uh, but yeah, Philip Rivers is like somebody you can go to about anything, you know, film study, uh, routes, whatever. I feel like he was a coach also, like him. Like Philip Rivers was just the goat. He knew the offense so well; it was like it was crazy. What are the differences with him and Justin Herbert? Uh, I think experience at this point. Uh, when I got with him, I think he was on year 10 or 11. So he already 10 years in, play, uh, playoffs. The boys was going like 14 and 2 every year back, Man, with, back yes. with LT and them. It was crazy back then. So um, I think definitely experience. He knew every defense, anything you could throw at him. He knew the whole offense. Um, so we changing plays at the line. Like, I don't even know what play he checking to. What's that, bro? I don't know. I don't know, bro. This, what to do. I don't know. So, I mean, it was crazy. And, uh, how, disappointed, how disappointing is it when you guys, it feels like you have great regular seasons, you get super close, you lose a close one in the playoffs. It seemed like for a minute there, year in and year out. Yeah, it's tough. Um, I actually seen Sean Marion do an interview the other day. He was saying, for them to get, for, for us to get to the playoffs, we got to go through Tom Brady, Ben Roethlisberger, uh, well, now it's Pat Mahomes, Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, like, these are the guys we got to get past. So, I mean, it ain't like we playing against Division two teams and we just thinking it up. Right. We we playing against some good guys. And last year we lost to Trevor Lawrence. He's a great guy, too. So On a, on a comeback. On a, on a beast, wild. On that a had, that had to fucking hurt, though, dude. On, on a beastie <laughs> comeback. The toughest <laughs> the, 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 the comeback. He never supposed to get hot like that. That was some Steph Curry shit. Like, just got hot. Like, we didn't get a stop. We on offense, we couldn't do shit, so. It can be like that, man. Any, they said any yeah, given you had Sunday. To go, you had to go in the halftime being like, damn, we boys. We, we, we had no round. Here we, we come. We scored yeah. one touchdown in the first half, and we had like five turnovers. So it wasn't, it wasn't. Yeah, but confident. they were playing so bad. Yeah, they were, they were. Yeah. Hey, I don't know what to tell you. Won. It was one of those ones, man. Yeah. That's got to be tough. God damn. Uh, what's it like playing for Coach Staley? And do you love going for it as much as you guys do? I love it. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, we love it for sure. It's another op. You know, we get another out. It's uh, we want the ball, man. Like we want the ball. We want to lose with the ball in our hands, and uh, that's what we want to do. So y'all are always ready to go for it when he's being aggressive, because he obviously he'll take a lot of heat whenever yeah. it doesn't work out and it costs a game or whatnot. But are you guys, as offensive players, like are you guys always like, hell yeah, let's drop another? Yeah, I think so. Game. Once he once he makes the call, it's like, oh yeah, for sure, we are going for it. It might be sometimes before the call, it's like, all right, damn, we got a punt. <laughs> oh, oh, we going for it. Oh, shit. Let me tighten up. Let me tighten up. So, yeah. Yeah, man. I, I was uh the Raiders game a couple years ago when y'all just kept fucking. It was like the last couple series, and it la it felt like it lasted an hour long yeah, because y'all kept converting yeah. on third and long and f even fucking fourth and long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, just reminiscing on the old days. Yeah. Back when ball was life? Yeah, back when ball was life. I thrust it. I got us into the playoffs. We beat him. <laughs> <laughs> Almost recovered yeah, the ball. Yeah, say that. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I got, a, I got a, a, a totally different question, but we were just at In-N-Out Burger. Where's your guys' stance at In-N-Out Burger? As think, far as fast food burger, I think where does it's it rank little, in your mind? It's a little bit like Starbucks. It's a little overrated to me. I it's eat it here and there, the but I think it's a little overrated. overrated. What makes it overrated? I feel like it's this is not the best most burger you can get. It's not. It's not the best burger you can get. Fries are trash. I'm not talking about the fries. I'm talking about the burger. With the burger is a big deal breaker. What's we'll that again? You can't get anything with the burger. You obviously don't know about the secret menu. Shake. We, we, what's the animal style, style protein? Fries? No, we don't want no animal we style fries. Nah, nah, it's cool, but nah. it's overrated though. What's better? 
A lot of spots better. Like five burger guys. spots? Name one. I'm a burger big five, spots? I'm a five Guys guy. Five Guys is not a fast food place. It's fast casual. What? <laughs> what does that even mean? There's no drive through <laughs> No drive through Okay. Yeah. Don't even worry about it, boys. This is going well. This, this is going, going well. Exactly. This is going well. How <laughs> <It's going laughs> well. yeah. Juan yeah. to go. Um, five Guys is better, though. Five Guys is better. Uh, also, three times as much. <laughs> is it? Yeah. I mean, you guys, Yo. football doesn't last forever. You guys need to work on your finances. You can't be going to Five Guys every single day. Like twenty five dollars for a burger. I digress. That might be the only one that's better. I'm, I like Burger King too. I ain't gonna lie to you. I, mean, I can burger do. It. I, I'm a Whopper. That's a, that guy. is a. That's a wild one. I'm a Whopper. Oh, I'm a Whopper guy. I don't know why, but I Carl's like Junior's a Whopper, bro. But Burger King. I don't think Burger King's ever had anything except for French toast sticks. I don't think there's a difference between yeah, Carl's Jr. and toast Burger King. Crazy. crazy. Um, what, who are a couple guys that that give you problems? Um, back wise, or linebacker. I don't know. Mm. Nobody. I ain't never really had like one person that really gives me problems. Like, okay. Who's had your number more, more so than you'd like? Mm. Revis, Revis did me dirty one time. When you played against Revis? It was my second year. And the game plan was like, we're not even going to throw his way. We know he's going to match you today, Keenan, and we're not even going to mess with him. That was the game plan. I've, I've never felt, I've never felt so disrespected in my life. Like, bro, this is crazy. Ended up having like two catches for one yard. Dang. No way. Hey, you got Wild. all the catches than you thought you Hey, did. I didn't even get open. I ain't going to hold you. I was running routes sometimes. Like, I know I ain't going to get the ball, but I'm going to try him right here. Let me see. see. Yeah, that was paying. Boom. Oh, man. He was just he right there. He me like, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> nah, he was tough. Is he the GOAT? Yeah, he's the GOAT. No, he's not even close. Really? Yeah. Is there of, anybody... of my age, I ain't talking about Dion and him. I ain't play against him, but yeah. He's not even close. Imagine being that guy. Yeah. He's like, hey, we can't even throw to you today. And he played for the Patriots, so it's like a double. Yeah. yeah. He know to play and he the best. Like, come on, bro. That's cheap. How about for you, Mike? Yeah. I don't know. I ain't never really. They all be the same. For yeah, real. I love wide receivers. <laughs> like, wide receivers real, like, skill positions, man. They just can't. No, it's like don't we don't really get matched a lot. Me and Mike don't get matched a lot. Like we only got matched by Stefan and JC. Mm -hmm. How those the guys? Patriots again? Um, that might be it. Like Xavier Howard matched him last year. Uh, Xavier Howard. Oh. Dolphins. Yeah, <laughs> most of the we don't get it. We don't get a lot of it because they gotta go like too high. They gotta run shell against us, and they'll just double me. You know what I'm saying like they are gonna. Yeah, that's all. Uh, you any team that plays man, against. honestly, it don't even matter who it is. If they play man and they don't have help, they're not gonna win. Love that answer, Mike. Yeah, the same. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fuck. To what? Oh, they got a roll? Oh, yeah, it's 1.30. Boys, thanks for joining us. It was an absolute was pleasure. Time. Thank you. For yes, sure. Sir. Yes.